Hey guys, welcome back to Shep Talk and welcome back to another AFI Friday. Today we are reviewing the 96th movie on the AFI Top 100 list and that is The Searchers. But before we get into that review, just a quick admin note. If you like what you see here, to remember to like, share, and subscribe. It does help my channel out greatly and you guys know that I truly appreciate each and every one of you helping me with this channel. Now, let's get into the review. Quick synopsis, Ethan Edwards returns from the Civil War thinking that he's going to have a quiet time, but he finds out that his family is under the threat of the Comanches. First and foremost about this movie, guys, I want to be upfront. I've never seen The Searchers. I've never heard of The Searchers until I saw it on the top 100 list. Um, I didn't even know it was a John Wayne movie until I pretty much looked, looked it up in IMDb. And I think the last John Wayne movie I saw was maybe when I was a kid. This is definitely the first John Wayne movie I've seen as um, an adult, pretty much. So I just want to be straight up and there's no bias. I was going into this movie without knowing what it was about. You know, except it looked like that it was a cowboy movie. And that was it. There's no bias, no stigmatism. I just went in there blind going, let's see what this movie is about. And one of the first things I'll say... You know, I don't usually try to come out with a critique, but I will say this movie took me a while, at least a few minutes, to figure out why it was on the AFI Top 100 list. There's some things that I will talk about a little later on that just kind of, especially at the beginning of this movie, that I was like, wow, this is, this, this is a Top 100 movie? Okay, let's, <laughs> let's give it a shot, okay? <laughs> but we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it did... To me, this movie was a little bit slow picking up. It really wanted you to pick up on things or kind of insinuate things with certain members of the cast, I think, or members of the family. And, you know, you think nowadays movies try to force feed you. I think this movie just pretty much was like, nope, we're not even going to force feed you. We're not even going to, we're going to give you these hints and we're not even going to talk about what's happening with the family dynamic. This movie takes it to a whole new level of going, asking that question is how far would you go to find your family member? So the overall story for the searchers, cause the name is pretty much it. Um, Ethan's family gets hit by, or should, not his, I guess it's not his immediate family. He's not married. So it's his brother and his wife and their kids. So, and that Ethan lives with them. Ethan comes home from the Civil War. It actually took him a few years actually to come home after the Civil War. And the big premise is there's a warring band of Comanches and they come through where Ethan and his family live and pretty much wipe out his, his family except for the little girl Debbie and, um, and her older sister Lucy. And... At first, I was like, man, they seem to be taking a long time trying to find Deb the, the family members. And I thought they were stretching just being, especially Hollywood back in the day, I thought they were not kind of mentioning that their days were passing and stuff like that. It's like, oh no, days, weeks, years are happening that they're going out and looking for, for these family members. And then they'd come home. And it'll be, okay, we're here for a night, we're here for a day or so, and then we're back on the road for months and years again. Power, more power to Ethan and uh, Martin, who is, I guess, some, not related, but adopted by Ethan's you know, brother's family. Uh, I guess Ethan found him on the side of the road, and his family had been attacked by Native Americans prior to this. They don't really go too much into it. But Ethan has grown up with Debbie and Lucy, and he's not backing down. He's going with Ethan no matter what and going to find his you know, long-lost family members. But he also has a girlfriend back home who, you know, he thinks is just going to wait for him. But, you know, after years at a time, she's just getting a little, you know, fed up with the not hearing from him at all. Or if, maybe once in every five years. But, you know, that just goes to show you is how determined would you be to go to find, to track down family members when they get taken by, you know, Comanches. 
I will say one thing I enjoy about coming back to these old films is the simple fact that, you know, they don't, these films aren't reliant heavily on green screen. You know, I, even I have green screen, screen going up in the back of my, my reviews. And it's just great seeing these big, magnificent sets and having them riding through a canyon and knowing they're riding through a canyon or the set that they're, the house that they're in is built, it's a built-in set because you can see the actor leaving the door and you can still see him walking, you know, through the, by the window and stuff like that. It's great to have these sets where, you know, it's not relying on green screen, you know, you're not, you're not seeing this family interact in a house that's not really there. I think it, practical effects, I think, still have a place in Hollywood. And I like it when, you know, you're going back to these old movies and you're seeing these practical effects used and used really well. Though I will say one thing about this movie. I think this movie is one of those reasons why at the end of every movie now, in the credit scenes, you have the caption that says, no animals were harmed in the filming of this movie because there's stuff that happens to horses in this movie where I'm like, Oh my god, is that horse okay? And sometimes I think the director just told the you know the the film crew to keep filming when scenes weren't going correctly because he wanted to see how this horse the, these horses played out because man there were some horses falling down seeming to be dragged by the current in rivers um yeah, so I really think these are the type of movies that we now have the warning. Now we have animal, you know, protection crews on set because I'd be very surprised if I went back and researched about this movie if some horses were not harmed in the filming of this movie. And another thing, I know this is the 1950s and so, you know, special effects aren't as great or strong as we have in movies nowadays. But one of the things when I saw that this was a John Wayne Western movie, I thought we were going to get some really great gun battles, you know, gunfight battles in this movie. And we do get them in this movie, but the simple fact that, you know, we see John Wayne, he goes, he pulls out his gun and he pop, and you see the big smoke, and then they edit and they show you the Native American, and he grabs his chest and he falls over, there's no wound, there's no blood, there's no nothing. I don't need, you know, like blood gorge, you know, spraying out and whatnot. But it just wasn't realistic. It was like, okay, maybe if I was back in, as a kid in the 1980s and had my little pop gun and it had a puff of smoke and my friend a couple of yards down grabbed his chest and fell over. That was pretty much exactly the way I felt this movie was, especially in the special effects department. Like... Even the Native Americans, though most of them didn't use bow and arrows, they're using rifles and guns as well. Even the bows and arrows, the arrows didn't seem to be sticking in anybody either. Uh, it, it just, it just, it's just one of the things I notice. And sorry if I, if I'm glancing down, Cotton's in here and he's moving around. I'm making sure he's not bumping the equipment too much. And then also speaking about these battles as well. And I get that this was filmed in the 1950s and things were different back then but man were these battles completely one-sided it was like they thought that you know the native americans couldn't win a war couldn't win a battle couldn't hurt anybody i think in total in this movie i think the native americans on screen when it came to the the cowboys and the indians i think the cowboy the indians i think hurt like two people, one of them being John Wayne at a certain point, but the majority of every shot that the Cowboys did hit an Indian, you know, or Native American. And that just goes to show you how, how it was viewed back then, how filmmaking was done back then. I was very disappointed in that. I thought it could have been done much better. Again, we have much better nowadays, but you really noticed how one-sided this movie was in its portrayal between cowboys and the Native Americans. And then, I guess this would be my last piece, really. Um, John Wayne in this movie, 
I don't... He was not, in my mind, the hero of this movie. He was maybe an anti-hero in this movie. And I think that's what they were really going for. Because for the simple fact that he... One, he had a standoff relationship with his family that they didn't really go into too much. You kind of saw that his family had different feelings. Everybody had different feelings toward Ethan and how you know he was with the family members and even the people of the community. And how they, you know, and then there are certain choices Ethan makes in this movie that are really, really, um, let's put, let me say interesting because, you know, he seems to make these rash decisions. And I guess if I wish I'd explain it more, I get it. They kind of try to set it up that you see that he is, he hates seems, seemingly all Native Americans. He seems to have a deep hate, hatred for these guys. But unless you're paying attention or you're really noticing that, some of the actions that he takes later on doesn't really sit well with you. You know, you're like, I kind of cringed at one scene when, when, his actions were taking place. So yeah, I'd say he's an anti-hero. I don't think he stuck around at the end of, after the end of this movie. I think he moved on because he knew his place wasn't with the family at the end of this play, at the end of this movie. But uh, yeah, in my go, John Wayne in this movie was an anti-hero and probably would not be my recommendation for an introduction to John Wayne as a cowboy star. With that being said though, I do think The Searchers was really good. Seeing the determination and the, um, even the growth, especially with Martin during the searching of for Debbie was really well done. I would say that at points in this movie, the acting choices weren't all that great. I would say that, you know, I won't say they were bad actors or actresses. I would say that they maybe were trying a little too hard. And instead of making a very big emotional scene, I was um, kind of laughing at them. But with all that being said, I would give The Searchers three out of five chefs. It is a good movie. I would recommend it as at least a watch through to see how things were considered in the 1950s. It is a good look into how we thought and treated Native Americans and how we perceived them in cinema. Um, but yeah, three out of five chefs. Um, I would say, it's, again, Searchers is good. I'd give it you know, at least one watch through. But guys, thank you for watching. I will see you at the next review.